Let me read to you a passage from the 19th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 13 to 15. It's the Gospel for Saturday of the 19th week of ordinary time. St. Matthew writes, Children were brought to Jesus that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked them, but Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not prevent them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. After he placed his hands on them, he went away. That's from Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 to 15. I suggest it speaks to us of the nearness of God. What do I mean? Well, there is a mysterious, even breathtaking character to the universe as it appears to religious man. I use the expression religious man advisedly in the sense that man is generally even overwhelmingly religious. There are exceptions to this, such as the modern secular man, which is to say man as influenced by the secularity that has arisen from modern Western culture. Generally though, man is religious. He acknowledges the reality of the deity or deities and the world's dependence on the power or powers above. He imprecates divine intervention so as to avert or sway the course of the world. But despite the world being seen as the work of the divine in this or that sense, man is very, very often, he sees the divine as distant. Man is in the world and the world is the work of God, but God, the ultimate principle from which the world has come, remains far from him. One would expect that visible nature, the world, would bring, being the work and therefore the voice of God, would bring God near to man. But despite the world, God is typically perceived as ever distant. In fact, one can sustain a fairly logical case, provided the starting points are granted, for considering that there is no God at all. It is certainly the case that God is sufficiently distant as to make it easy for man to ignore him completely and to carry on in the world as if he did not exist. I choose to regard this intellectual position as further evidence of the perceived distance of God from man and the world. Yet man yearns for him, for, or for something like him, that is more and greater than the things of this world, which provide him with earthly and more immediate satisfaction. So it is that we have the religions of man. Man and society yearn for the divine, and his religions implement this yearning. At the same time, God is out of our sight, out of our hearing and our touch. He is imagined in the practice of religion, but the reflective person knows that these are mere imaginings. The divine is out of earshot and beyond our pictures of him. From man's point of view, he is indeed the beyond. Is man then condemned to a fundamental frustration? Is life as Sartre and Camus insisted, therefore absurd and meaningless. The real and true God has revealed himself to be a God of massive surprises. He has intervened and showed that he is a real and living person overflowing with the love that yearns to be near. God is with us. He is close. More still, he says to us, come to me. Rudolf Otto wrote his book, The Idea of the Holy, in 1917, showing the natural dread evoked by the numinous. The numinous is what he called a tremendous mystery, mysterium tremendum. But what the God of Revelation says to man is, come to me. He draws close to us and says, come. Further, he sustains us as we approach and smiles as we enter his intimate company. This is surely the meaning of the Christian revelation, and in particular of the person and message of Jesus Christ 
the Son of God made man. And this brings us to our Gospel today that I read earlier, so expressive of the entire meaning of divine revelation. Our Lord says of the little children, Do not prevent them from approaching me, for it is persons like them who enter the kingdom of my heavenly Father. As we heard, children were brought to Jesus that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked them, but Jesus said, Let the children come to me, and do not prevent them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. After he placed his hands on them, he went away. Matthew chapter 19, verse 13 to 15. With Jesus Christ, puny man, man the sinner, man who is so vulnerable and weak, may approach the living and all holy God with confidence and remain near to him. He who is the Son of God addresses us as his friends. I have not called you servants anymore, he tells his disciples. I have called you friends. Elsewhere he says to them, Come to me, all you who labour and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. The Word made flesh describes himself as meek and humble in heart. God is meek and humble before his creatures, and he invites each of his own to approach him with confidence. This is the true God. Man tends to have a completely false impression of God, if there is a God, and it is because of the curse of sin. Christ commands that we be like little children, for as such is the kingdom of heaven. The child tends to trust, and hopefully is docile. He docilely trusts and obeys. He stays close to his parent, and does not stray from him in willful independence. God has revealed that he wants us to regard him as our Father, a loving and merciful Father, one to whom we, all, we can always go. Let us bring this grand message, which is the good news of the Gospel, to modern secular man, for whom God is very much out of sight. Let us be like the parents of our Gospel scene, bringing their children to Jesus Christ to receive his blessing. This is what it is to be a Christian in the world.